What's going on, everyone? Welcome back into the channel. So the Packers' first injury report of Week 9, Packers versus Rams, just came out a lot later than we're used to expecting on normal Wednesdays. But hey, it just came out, so let's go over it. If you happen to be a new viewer here and want more Packers news analysis and updates every single day, such as injury reports, game analysis, and any other Packers updates, you'll find it all here right on this channel. So if that does interest you, go down and click subscribe. All right, so we're going to waste no time and dive right into this injury report. And I think this is is actually the shortest injury list we've had for the Packers all season so maybe just maybe they're starting to get a little bit healthy here I feel like that would be a great turn of events for this Packers team heading into week nine two and five so at the top of the list we see Jair Alexander with his back injury he was limited participation so we have no one not practicing today which is awesome as we see on this list Elton Jenkins with his knee injury was also limited so Jair hopefully can get over that back injury and get back to his normal self we're going to need him now more than ever with the Packers trading away Rasul Douglas and he's really going to have to step up and cover these number one wide receivers this week going against Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua at Carrington Valentine is going to have a tall you know task there to cover one of those guys on every single play so we'll see how this defensive backfield lines up going into this game without Rasul Douglas it's going to be very interesting it would feel a lot better right now if Eric Stokes was active, but he's not. Then we see Aaron Jones with his hamstring injury. He was, again, limited. Now, he was wearing a red non-contact jersey in today's practice, and that's only because the Packers switched up their practice routine. Usually, they go padded on Thursdays. They switched it to padded today on Wednesday, and Matt LaFleur said this last week. He's going to switch some things up in terms of how the practices go each and every week. So that's the only reason Aaron Jones had a red no-contact jersey. They believe he's still good to go. They're just being extra cautious. They don't want him to get re-injured in. In practice which makes sense I'm just really hoping we can see a full 100% Aaron Jones here in the near future then we see Luke Musgrave with his ankle injury he was also limited just an awesome turnaround from a guy that was in a walking boot last Wednesday then limited Thursday then full participant last Friday and played in that game against the Vikings again I say this every single week the Packers need to use Luke Musgrave better they need to use him across the middle of the field not these simple two yard um, arrow routes and all of that they need to use Luke Musgrave vertically and abuse the the mismatches that he can create. Finally on this list, we see Josh Nyman with his foot injury. He was also limited, and this is very important because Josh Nyman could be the starting left tackle of the Packers going into this week. They said it's going to be a toss-up between him and Rasheed Walker at left tackle, and I think we can all agree that it should be Josh Nyman at this point. Let me know down in the comments below who you want at left tackle going into this Rams game. Me personally, it's got to be Josh Nyman. Not saying Rasheed Walker won't be a future tackle of the Packers, maybe right tackle in the next uh, year or two. Uh, but so far, the experiment at left tackle with Rasheed Walker this last four weeks has been pretty poor. So I think it's time to go to your guy that has a lot of experience and is at least average at doing it. So left tackle, Josh Nyman, in my opinion, uh, for this upcoming game. Then to quickly go over the Rams injury report, and there are a lot more injured than the Packers. I feel like this is the first week all season where the other team is more injured than us. We see cornerback uh, Kobe Durant there, shoulder injury. He was limited. Ethan Evans, the punter, is also limited. A big one here, Rob Havenstein, their tackle with a calf injury as it did not participate. Ernest Jones, a linebacker with a knee injury, did not participate. Hunter Long, tight end, full participant. Defensive tackle, Lurel Merchison, I'm don't know if I'm saying that right. Defensive tackle there, limited participation. Puka Nakua with his knee injury is limited. He'll definitely play in this game. Most importantly, we see Matt Stafford with his right thumb injury did not participate. So the Packers very well could be going against Brent Ripon this week. And that looks like as of right now, that will be the case. The Rams signed another quarterback today to their active roster. Furthermore, signaling that Matthew Stafford may not be able to go in this game. Then we see Ben Skarnick here, wide receiver with a Achilles injury. He is limited. Then also wide receiver at all. Austin Trammell with his hip injury also limited. So that is the first injury report of week nine. There'll be another injury report tomorrow and then the most important one on Friday with all the injury designations. So stay tuned for that. But as of right now, you know, bearing any new random pop up injuries and knock on wood on that one, it looks like all of the players on the Packers injury report might not hold a designation going into this game, which will be the first time that there's no injury designations to any of the 53 players heading into a game, which would be huge for this Packers team potentially playing a Rams team without their starting quarterback and very well could get a win um, breaking this four game losing streak but that about does it for this video I appreciate you guys coming by please leave a like down below if you did enjoy it but I'll catch you on the next one and as always go pack go